Hi, I'm Ranger Nathan Hall with Richmond National Battlefield Park. And today's YouTube video is part of a collaboration with another YouTube channel, Little Wars TV. Together we are going to update you and follow the advance of McClellan's army up the peninsula. You're looking now at the James River as it winds and snakes its way towards Richmond. If you're following our On to Richmond weekly series, then you know in our last campaign update, the personal intervention of President Lincoln has led to the fall of Norfolk and the successful opening of the James. This river is a superhighway directly into the heart of Richmond. And today, exactly 160 years ago, the Union Navy will test their superhighway to see exactly how far they can go. And the answer is, is right here, right? This is as far as they'll go before they run into trouble, big trouble. And right now we're standing over 100 feet above the James on an outcropping called Drury's Bluff, just seven miles from Richmond. Today this land is a part of our national park system and we encourage you to visit and look out over the river with the same vantage point that Confederate artillery gunners would have seen in 1862. It's a commanding position. Guns on this bluff could dominate a mile stretch of the river. In addition to shore batteries, Confederate defenses at this narrow bend are bolstered by the newly arrived gun stripped from the Merrimack, along with her crew. Sharpshooters are posted along the riverbank and underwater obstacles block the channel for most of its width. But will it be enough to save Richmond? I think you have to admire the Union Navy for testing these defenses. I love the comment made by Federal Squadron Commander John Rogers. He simply wrote, I resolve to give the matter a fair trial. That's an understatement, and he'll be true to his word. Five ships of his squadron, including three ironclads, will appear at 7.30 in the morning on the river below. Over the next three hours, an epic cannonade tears through this valley, filling the river with clouds of smoke. It's a vicious gun duel, and the volume of fire on the bluff is overwhelming. Rogers' flagship, the ironclad Galena, is hit 44 times and set on fire by an internal explosion. The fire is so intense that the two wooden ships disengage almost immediately. The USS Monitor is one of the ships on the scene, and her armor saves her from severe damage. After three hours, Commander Rogers orders a retreat. This will be the first and only time the Federal Navy attempts to break through the Confederate defenses at Drury's Bluff. There are some great personal stories from this battle. One of one strikes my mind is the story of Augustus Drury. Yeah, that Drury. And this property is his bluff. And today he's here in 1862 defending his family farm. He's working in a Confederate gun battery. There are several stories worth telling on the Union side, but I'd like to draw attention to a corporal named John Mackey. Mackey is a Marine on board the Galena, the ironclad that was hit 44 times. When most of her gun deck crew was disabled or wounded, Mackey dropped his rifle and personally manned one of the cannons to continue firing. He was awarded the Medal of Honor, making him the first member of the United States Marine Corps to receive the nation's highest award. Speaking of Marines, another interesting footnote of this battle is the Confederate States of America established their own Marine Corps here. That's right, Drury's Bluff will become the official base and home to both the Confederate Marine Corps and their version of the Naval Academy. There's so much history here at this bluff, and it's just one of many sites operated by Richmond National Battlefield Park. We hope you'll come visit us. Indeed, with the path to Richmond now blocked on the James, McClellan must choose a different one. Join us over on Little Wars TV next week as we talk about the hard road that McClellan has to travel. Pull off the coat and a roll up the sleep of James River is a hard road to travel. The gumbos give it up in terror and despair. For Richmond is a hard road to travel, I declare.